the scum that is left over from the time of refinement that our Creator set up through His Word to build His temple is about to be put on the rock and burnt up. The scum is identified in the Ezekiel 24 prophecy. This prophecy testifies that the scum is that which is unclean because it was not cleansed through living His Word. This prophecy also flows into a testimony that shows that many from the scattered descendants of Israel who were supposed to be set apart to become the Son of Man's bride are the scum that will be destroyed in the coming fire. In Ezekiel 24, we read, In the ninth year, in the tenth month, in the tenth day of the month, Yahweh's word was made to be to me, saying, This prophecy being given for the tenth day of the tenth month is very significant in this. The tenth day of the first month is the day that our Messiah rode into Jerusalem. The tenth day of the tenth month is nine months after his doing so. The tenth day of the first month is also the day that we are commanded to set aside the Passover lamb or goat each year so that we can observe our Creator's Passover memorial on the fourteenth day. The reference to the ninth year is a tie-in to this nine-month gap that ties the judgment that is found in this prophecy to the Passover memorial. Yesterday was the tenth day of the second month. The tenth day of the second month is the day that those who missed the opportunity to observe the Passover in the first month are told to set aside the Passover so that they can observe his commanded memorial on the fourteenth day of the second month. The tenth day of the second month is also the anniversary of Yahweh telling Noah to start loading the ark. There is an eight month gap between this eight month gap between this tenth day of the second month and the tenth day of the tenth month that is found in the Ezekiel 24 prophecy. This eight month gap is reflective of some eighth days of the month that are fast approaching and it ties in his Passover memorial into the reason why the great and fearful day of his vengeance will be on the eighth day of the eleventh month. This, The eighth day of the fifth month will be the end of my three years of walking naked and barefoot. Plus in this, he has stamped his judgment to the eighth day in other ways as well that have been discussed in other videos. The six, month, six months that are between the eighth day of the fifth month and the eighth day of the eleventh month is reflective of the six thousand years of man's self-rule under the two leads of their father Satan that will soon come to an end. The next verse ties this Ezekiel 24 prophecy together with Nebuchadnezzar being empowered to come against Jerusalem on this same day. Son of man, Write the name of this day. The bones of this day will be as the bones were in the same day that the king of Babylon laid hold of Jerusalem. I have spoken in other videos how something or someone's name represents their character or the image of that name. I have also shown in other videos how Ezekiel's son of man prophecies are for the two witnesses. Yahweh is testifying to the day and the year of his vengeance in this prophecy. Second Kings Chapter 25, verse 1, tells us that he rose up Nebuchadnezzar to come against Jerusalem on the tenth day of the tenth month as well. And his doing so happened in the ninth year of Nebuchadnezzar's reign. He was designing Nebuchadnezzar's siege in the ninth year of his reign, and his giving this prophecy to Ezekiel for the ninth year puts a double stamp on the nine-month gap. And this nine-month gap stamps his judgment upon those of you who have refused to partake of his Passover memorial, of his Passover sacrifice. Refusing to hearken to his word is refusing his Passover sacrifice that he set up through his son's shed blood. And refusing to observe his Passover memorial is refusing to hearken to his word. His word says that his Passover memorial is to be a statute throughout our generations. On top of this, his word says that you have to be clean before his face in order to observe his Passover anyway. And this Ezekiel 24 prophecy testifies that the scum is those of you who refuse to obey his clean and unclean statutes. So it all ties together. In the account of Nebuchadnezzar coming upon Jerusalem, Yahweh even stamped the number 11 that he has woven into his end time timeline and into his 377 day timeline in the days of Noah. Nebuchadnezzar's siege was unto the eleventh year of King Zedekiah. And during the days of Nebuchadnezzar's siege, Yahweh also tied in the ninth day of the fourth month by recording that a famine prevailed upon Jerusalem on this day. The ninth day of the fourth month will be on June 25th, the day after the eighth day of the fourth month. He has been stamping the eighth day throughout the testimony that, that he has sent me to you with. 
One of the biggest ways that he has done so was how he tied in Jeroboam's profane feast in the eighth month into his timeline last year. And he is doing so again this year with the last day of Jeroboam's profane feast. The last day of his profane feast in the eighth month will be 70 and 7 days before January 20th. There are 242 days between the eighth day of the second month and the tenth day of the tenth month, the day that of the Ezekiel 24 prophecy and the day of Nebuchadnezzar's siege. 242 days is 22 11s. If you have listened to other videos, you might remember that there were not only 110 days after the water ceased until we said that he remembered Noah. There were also 220 days after he recorded that he remembered him, that he opened from when he opened the door for him and his family to come off from the ark. Yep, I am sure that these are nothing more than just a bunch of more coincidences. The 10th day of the 10th month will be on December 23rd, which will be 28 days or four sevens from January 20th, thus stamping his four sevens that are in each of his 30-day months. In the account of Nebuchadnezzar coming against Jerusalem, Yahweh even brought in fleeing through the two walls to represent fleeing through the testimony of the two witnesses. And there are references to the king's garden and the king's judgment and the plains of Jericho as well as other things like this that are found in the record. The reason that the plains of Jericho is significant is how it ties in with Zechariah's prophecy that those of you who do not repent will become a plain before my face along with the so far sounding last December in the manner that they sounded at Jericho back then. He is revealing all of this to name or to identify the day of his vengeance and why he is sending it. The eighth day of the second month, a few days ago, was 121 days after the seventh day of the shofar's blowing. The seventh and final day of the shofar's blowing was on Moloch's birthday party on December 25th last year. 121 days is 11 and 11s. This means that there were 363 days between day seven of the shofar's blowing and the tenth day of the tenth month. 363 is 33 11s. 363 days that lead to up to December 23rd, plus 28 days that take us to January 20th, equals 391 days. The prophecy for the sixth trumpet is for a year and a month and a day and an hour. A year and a month and a day equals 391 days. The hour is to put an emphasis on Yeshua's in one hour prophecies. And there is much, much more that is spoken about in other videos that all testifies to the eighth day of the eleventh month. But why do you need for the day of his wrath to be barreling down upon you? Why not turn from your rebellion and turn to loving our Creator's righteousness because his word tells you to? I will tell you why. It is because you are in love with your rebellion to keep his word instead of being love in love with it. His word is the image of his righteousness. So you are in rebellion to his true image. You are in rebellion to his righteousness. In verse 3, And liken a parable unto the rebellious house, and say to them, Thus saith Yahweh Elohim, Set on a pot, set it on, referring to setting it on a refiner's fire, and also pour water into it, referring to the baptism water that must be turned into Yeshua's blood. Gather the pieces into it and fill it with every good piece, the thigh, the shoulder, and the choice bones, and take the choice of the flock, and also turn about the bones from the bottom, and boil and boil them, and let the bones see therein, Remember, this prophecy started out by saying that the bones of Israel will be as they were in the days of Nebuchadnezzar. Thus, in this way, or afterwards, Adonai Yahweh will say, Woe to the bloody city! Woe to the pot whose scum is therein, whose scum is not gone out from it! Bring out piece by piece of that which is not the scum, so that it does not fall upon the lot, referring to falling of with those who will be consumed in the coming fire. In this verse he is saying that those whom he chose to receive their portion in his kingdom are the seed of Israel who chose to be refined through his word. They are not the scum. The scum came out from them. But those of you who refuse to be refined are the scum that remain in the pot because the scum remained in you. You did not choose to be washed through his word. He refers to you as a bloody city because of your involvement in helping one another and your children march merrily along your rebellious pathways to the lake of fire. This is what he means elsewhere by blood touching blood. 
You murder one another by helping one another to remain in your whoredoms. In verse 7, put her upon the top of a rock because she spilled out blood upon the earth in her midst, but she did not cover it with dust. In this verse, he is expressing why he is sending his judgment by attaching his judgment to one of his many commandments that you have rejected. Leviticus 17 verse 13 tells us that when we spill blood upon the earth, we are commanded to cover it with dust. He is tying in letting the blood spill upon the ground with letting his son shed blood spill to the ground in vain. The tie-in is your not covering the blood with dust testifies that you are not covered by his son's shed blood that you let spill to the ground in vain. He is telling Ezekiel that the scum is going to be put on the rock and he ties in the rock with not hearkening to his commandments. Yeshua said that all will be judged by his father's word in the last day. Right after he said that he will tell those of you who lived in violation to his father's Torah to depart from him because he did not know you, he said that those who did his father's word in the flesh is those who built their house upon a rock. Then he said that those who did not do his father's word built their house, built your house on the sand. And he said that your house is going to come crashing down with a great fall. He said that he is going to tell you to depart from him even though you claimed that he was your master. He said that he is going to tell you to depart from him even though you claimed that you did many wonderful works in his name. He said that he's going to tell you to depart from him even though you claimed that you preached or prophesied or even cast out demons in his name. And he said the reason why is because your works were apart from his father's Torah. His father said that he is sending his wrath upon those of you who profane his Torah and pollute his Sabbaths and put no difference between the clean and the unclean. What part of this don't you get? Verse 8, In hot indignation and in my anger my vengeance will rise up and I will give your blood upon the top of a rock, because you would not be covered. He goes on in the following verses to give his five-point sign that is his promise that he has sent me to you. One of these five points is for those of you who will return to him to cover your heads. He is saying this, his saying this is re referencing his wrath being poured out on you, not only because you would not hearken to his word, but also because you would not hearken to his five-point sign, which is hearkening to his word. Verse 9, Therefore thus saith Yahweh, Woe to the bloody city! I will gather you as fuel to increase the fire, kindle the fire, and heap on the wood, and prepare the flesh, and consume it, and let the bones be burned. Remember this prophecy started out in verse 2, saying that Israel's bones will be like Israel's bones back when he gave them over to Nebuchadnezzar, back, for, back then for their rebellion to his word. The name of the day of his wrath has been given. His rebellion to his word. Then stand it, or stand the pot, and that which is empty, or that which does not have fruit, that which is barren, upon the great heat of the coals, so that its brass glows and melts, in order that the scum, that which is, that which is unclean, that is in the midst of it, will be consumed. I am worried that she has not come forth out from the great scum of her deception, he says. Her scum will become fire. Your uncleanliness is lewdness. On account of I would have cleansed you, but you would not be cleansed from your uncleanliness. You will no longer be cleansed from your uncleanliness until I let down my hot displeasure upon you. I, Yahweh, have spoken it, and it will come to pass, and I will do it. I will not dismiss, neither will I have compassion, neither will I sigh. I will judge you according to your ways, according to your rebellious pathways that are apart from his word, and according to your works, according to your lawless actions in the flesh, saith Yahweh Elohim. Like I asked, what part of this don't you get? His word likens those of you who do not live his word unto the scum of Israel. His word likens those of you who put no difference between the clean and the unclean statutes to the scum of Israel. His word tells you that you are uncovered, and it is his word that his only begotten son said that all will be judged by in the last day. The mouth of Yahweh Elohim has spoken this. He has spoken this not only through his son, but also through the rest of his servants, the prophets. The other day in the Ezekiel's Bride video, I spoke about how this Ezekiel 24 prophecy goes on to testify that those of you who call yourselves the son of man's bride will die if you do not turn from your rebellion to his word. Rebellion to his word is rebellion to his only begotten son who was made in the image of his word. Turn from your rebellion to his word. The day of his wrath is at hand. 
turn from being the scum of Israel, and let him clothe you in his righteousness, and cleanse you with his son's shed blood. Thus declares Yahweh Elohim's word.